Hello everybody, it's me Tonic TZW, and I'm here with another video, this time in the Tier 5 Warspite, a British premium battleship. And this video is entitled Game of Thrones, how to make your entire team hate you, lesson one. And uh, this one is probably one of those reasons why people get hate mail. Um, but it's not me that's going to be sending it this time around. It's going to be Red Team, and that will become apparent why um, a little bit later on in this video. But it is pretty much all tier 5, um, bar 4, a tier 4 destroyer on each side. Um, Chin and I are both in war spites. We have a full division and uh, Chin and I in division on our side. And uh, red team have a Huger and an Exeter in division, which is um, quite a important combination, I think. Um, and something that we are very aware of at the start. Now, everybody plays games different ways. Everybody plays ships different ways. And um, yeah, now I've said it before and I'll say it again. Reversing a battleship at the start is not something that a lot of people like to see. However, I do like to just back up a touch and start a turn before going full forwards and uh, continuing that turn. Because I don't always want to go forwards um, into that turn because you pick up speed a little bit too quick. And uh, you may give up too much of a broadside to the red team and take a lot of damage very early in the game. Our destroyers, or I should say, the destroyer on our cap has decided that he, he doesn't want to go into the cap. And we'll give him his due on that one. Um, but given that there's only two destroyers in the game, for whatever reason, the other destroyer decides that he's going to come across this way as well. Even though the left side of the map is uh, much more open water and more playable for destroyers. And to be frank, if I start center on this game, um, I will generally play the centre um, and left side of the minimap and utilise that open water to get shots on um, with torpedoes. But we have an Arizona out there, another premium battleship. He's got quite big guns. We see the Exeter out there and uh, we've got the Mackerson there sailing broadside as well. We do get a cap reset there. And I'm looking at that Exeter thinking, is he going to smoke on that corner and just start lobbing shots across at the side of us? Um, the Hugo is with him as well. And um, we are thinking, mm, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? But the Hugas look at the opposite way. Exeter disappears as we uh, put those shots out. And uh, we're just going to let them fly. But we do land a couple and uh, pick up a little bit of damage now looking at where the two destroyers are we're thinking they're going to push all the way around but red team have pushed this capture point very hard very fast there is no doubt a destroyer in there because we did see a lot of little he shells coming across the top and we are the closest target which is indicated by the located icon which means that somebody is running twist and track or perceptive and we are closest to them now my concern is is that we're going to have a destroyer come out in front of us or we're going to have the destroyer come out behind us chin is angling out and turning it away um i am pushing in a little bit closer we're still in will range of each other and uh, that's something that we often utilize i get a blind shot across the top of the Mackerson. Chin has a much clearer shot and plops some shells on him and I hit him for a citadel as well. So we decide um, perhaps that we may want to try and focus this Mackinson and get him off the map. The destroyers are putting their torpedoes into the center of the cap and continuing to push around. Um, the rest of um, blue team appear to have gone wide around the outside of C cap and uh, that's something that I played in a C creed before and I actually did quite a good job of it and uh, I'd like to say I actually did a better job of it than they appear to be doing with um, you know their added numbers but um, it looks as though one of red teams of destroyers has just come straight down the middle 
and sailed into sea cap so those guys are captured from front and rear now so um chin and i are still trying to batter this Matt mackinson and the destroyers are still trying to torpedo things we see the hugo behind us and i say to chin let's not get kited by that mackinson into um, open water where we can be hit from the broadside let's turn back around because i am spotted still um, that's obviously the mackinson from when i fired but he is shortly going to go out of range of being able to detect me now, although he's trying to get a shot on me you'll notice that these two destroyers um they are getting kited away from the objective um, it's obvious that there's one destroyer on a b cap because he's been spotted which is why one of our dds has probably smoked up um, and that means that we have no eyes on anything but we do see the exeter out there at range now that is the huger's teammate the destroyer gets himself spotted in b cap again and I'm looking at this Exeter thinking, can I get shots on him round here without killing the side of that island? Um, but he's moving away faster than I can close down on him. We try to sort of aim in, but we're, we're holding the shot. We aren't quite sure about this. We know there is a destroyer here. And uh, I'm saying to Chin that I'm quite certain that this guy is going to come round the bottom. And asking one of those destroyers to push back for us and you know, spot this guy or try to spot this guy. Mackinson is running away to the um, back of the map. I think he's taken enough damage from us. The Huger takes um, torpedoes and a flood. And our two destroyers are circling like sharks. Now, although I can't see this guy, uh, we've got him locked in. We get some shots across the top and uh, we actually get a decent amount of damage off him. We're already up to 70,000 damage. Um, what are we, six and a half minutes into the game? So not doing too badly. But he sails out broadside to us and Chin and I have both got our guns on this guy. But we're still very wary that there's a destroyer you know, that's been spotted in B cap. Um, but we're going to focus our attentions on this Hugo now because otherwise he is going to push us round and we want to get rid of him. So we've got the option to, t uh, you know, about turn 180 if we need to. He's burning, he's flooding, he's got more torpedoes running on him. Um, I'm about to scrape Chin's paint, so I apologise for that Chin. Hugo goes on us, Chin gets a salvo and uh, gets rid of the Huger. I think just before he he burns or floods out but we know there is a destroyer there Chin is pinging the map and we go and look get this guy spotted let us help you to get rid of that threat and then you can take the cap the other destroyer is way out on the white line still and we're kind of paying him to say you know look can can you push in too um, I, I don't know what was going through his mind, but we have a Jeppard spotted. There is a Jeppard in the wild. Chin and I both start a hard turn to the left because there are no doubt torpedoes coming. And where we try to help that little destroyer, um, I don't know what he was doing. Was he trying to turn and get torpedoes off? I don't know, but we get guns on the jeppard he is in secondary range i absolutely clatter him but because we've already got ap loaded we are not going to kill him with a salvo like that so we stay on in range with our secondaries we spot the mackinson out the back who's been able to heal up chin has got torpedoes running on him again and he manages to pick up that um, destroyer now we've lost one dd it is three ships players five and we are trying to figure out what is the smartest move for us now we know there is a destroyer out in front of us somewhere we have no doubt at all that he is leading that mackinson um 
there is an Exeter out here who hasn't been seen for some time and the Mackerson is pushing in there thinking I've got you to broadside mate. Now Chin and I are going to try and utilize this island to give us some cover from that Mackinson and I'm going to try and get some shots across the top of that island Adam. Um, but I don't think they're going to do any good. Chin is focus firing the Mackinson to our front. The destroyer has finally pushed in to this capture point and he's going to start turning that. Um, I'm keeping my guns right ready for the Exeter or the Mackinson reappearing. We hit the brakes, we're going to start backing up and lo and behold the torpedoes come in. So we probably hit the brakes at just the right time there. But um, we set something on fire and I just realised it's that Mackinson who's very close and the destroyer is there as well. He's half health, but he is on our broadside. And I say to Chin, we need to push. We need to push now. We need to get away from that DD as quickly as we can and do whatever we can to uh, turn this fight in our favor. We know the Exeter is round the corner. He's no doubt waiting for us. The Mackinson is going all out. He's focused on Chin. But we get a mighty salvo into the side of him for a high caliber and a confederate. We know the destroyer is still behind us. He's in secondary range. He's going to be um, throwing torpedoes at us. Here we go. And I'm going to take one, I think. Yep. And Chin, I think, takes two. I think two. Or is it three? The Exeter is in his smoke screen ahead of us. Um, we are pushing in literally life support for Chin here. But the Exeter gets himself spotted because he forgets about his smoke penalty. And we are going to send him back to port for that terrible, terrible mistake. We have a Krispy Kreme out there. The Mackinson is still there. And our destroyer is chasing that Mackinson and spamming torpedoes at him. Um, the Mackinson isn't obviously as fast as the torpedoes, but those torpedoes are going to close in very slowly and give him plenty of time to react to where they're coming from. The destroyer has disappeared from our rear. He obviously learned the error of his ways um, in pushing in too close. But the Mackinson takes Chin out, so my will to rebuild is gone. But in his final salvo, Chin does get rid of the Krispy Kreme. Now I try to ping that DD to say, hey, look, you know, maybe, maybe take a cap. But then I look at the clock and I look at the points and I'm thinking, there is, there is absolutely no way in hell in which we are going to win this. The torpedoes come across my back and um, as the Magnuson was doing and as I was just saying earlier if you're going away from the torpedoes it takes longer for them to catch you so you have more time to react where they are. The Mackinson has got the right idea. He knows that they are well ahead on points. He knows that they have got this in the bag. Um, they've probably got a minute to play for the points. But in turning to get his guns on me, he gives me a broadside and me firing at him is going to force him to turn out again. And that is going to be his undoing. Although we land one shell on him, he is now committed to that right turn and is going to have to try and get his rudder back. But he is not going to get that rudder back in time. And our little DD does indeed pick himself up a kill. There is one ship left in the map. It is that little destroyer that is chasing me and trying to torpedo me. So knowing that it is a destroyer and knowing that he's already made the mistake of getting himself detected once, I switch to high explosive. Red team have what 70 points to win there is barely a minute on the clock and i am not expecting to survive this game 
all that DD has to do is run away, and they have got this one in the bag. I go. I I know I'm spotted. The destroyer gets himself spotted, so straight away I know he's coming in close for t torpedoes. So I hit the brakes and I turn. I've got the HE ready. Ready. What is there to say about that? That was absolutely in the bag for Red Team. And instead, we finish with an absolute victory with high caliber Confederate and a dev strike um, with three kills and 143,000 damage. And uh, Chin, although he didn't do as much damage, I think he picked up something like 86,000 damage in that game. We pick up three kills apiece. The uh, two destroyers get one apiece and the Aoba gets one. Um, the Matsuki does finish top for his team. But um, I guarantee that every single one of those people on that team sent him hate mail after that one. Because that was an absolute throw for no reason whatsoever. So take a lesson from this one. If you've got it in the bag, sail away. Take the win. There is no shame in running away and taking the points win. It is a victory for your team. I do hope you've liked watching this video. Please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more videos and live streams. I've been Tonic. This has been Game of Throws. Until next time, goodbye.